Hey, I hope you're having an absolutely incredible day. Today, I'm gonna to be running you through something truly powerful, which is how you can connect Airtable and Google Drive together. So, from you as an end user, you'll simply drop your video into an inbox, it'll create another folder with that video, and then it's going to transcribe your video into audio, so you'll have the transcript of it, and from there it'll generate the caption, the title, as well as the tags that are necessary for your video. We could even generate a thumbnail for your video if you wanted, and then all of that will be uploaded to Airtable for you to review and share. So today we're gonna to be building out the caption, the description, and the tags. And in a later video, we'll be building out how you can post directly from Airtable. So then all you need is really Google Drive and Airtable in order to manage all of your content. So if you're interested in learning how you can post to all social media platforms, make sure that you subscribe because I'll be covering that in a later video. With that being said, let's jump right in. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to create a new scenario. You're going to want to go to Google Drive. And then in Google Drive, you're going to watch the files in a folder. Now you're going to want to connect to Google Drive or create your connection. So to do that, you're gonna go to Google Cloud Console. Now you can go ahead, you can create a new project. I've gone and done that and named it Integrum at Google Drive. And then from there, you're going to wanna to click on APIs and services. You're going to search for Google Drive, then you'll see it right here, Google Drive API. Go ahead and enable it. I've already enabled it, so I would just hit manage. And then you can see here, you have credentials, you have an OAuth consent screen. So you're gonna come here, you're gonna click create credentials, OAuth client ID. The application type is going to be a web application. So under authorized redirect, you are going to paste in these two. So Integromat, uh, OAuth, Google restricted and make. Then you are going to click create. After that, you'll be presented with your Google Drive client ID as well as the client secret. Save those somewhere safe and let's continue moving forward. So we're going to add a connection. We can call this Airtable, show advanced settings, and now you're going to paste in your client ID, client secret, and then sign in with Google like you normally would into that account. And you're just gonna hit okay. Now we're gonna open back up the Google Drive watch files in a folder. And then you are going to want to create a folder within your Google Drive. So I have mine under content, and then I made a folder called inbox. So we're just gonna navigate to that folder now. Inbox, the limit, we're just gonna set to one. We're gonna hit okay. And we're gonna create a folder. We are going to navigate to that same inbox, right? And the new folder's name is just going to be equal to name. All right, so we're just gonna test that once. We're gonna run it once. Let's drop some sample content in there. Just gonna rename it. We're gonna pop back into here. We're gonna run it again. Now it should have found that. You can see here it's found it and it should have created a folder. So. If we come back into our inbox, you can see that the folder was created. Now the next thing we want to do is put this video into this folder. So once again, go to Google Drive. We're going to move a file or folder. File ID is going to be the file ID from step one. And the folder location is going to be the folder ID from the previous step from a folder we just created. So if we delete this folder and we run it again and we drop our content back in there again, let it upload. So we're going to go ahead and just save and run once. And if we head back to our inbox, you'll now see that it has been added to that folder. Awesome. The last thing we want to do is create a record in Airtable. We're going to create a new Airtable database. We'll call it content and we'll rename our first table to content as well. We'll set this field to an ID, which is going to be an auto number. Name this the file name, single line text. We are also going to need the video ID, always handy to have. We'll set that to single line text. We are going to need the folder ID, set that to single line text. All right, so I went ahead and I created a couple more columns. So I got this video type, it is a single select, and I've added in YouTube, TikTok, Instagram Reels, and YouTube Shorts. I have a YouTube title, a YouTube description, and YouTube tags that are all long text. And then I also went and created another grid, which is going to be YouTube video grid. So the idea is that now a video is going to populate into here. We'll get the file name, the video ID and the folder ID, and then you can choose the video type. And then based on the video type that's applied, it's going to trigger an automation within make 
to pull back the YouTube title, the YouTube description, the YouTube tags. If we were to put it as TikTok, it would populate it with TikTok relevant title, description, tags. Same with Instagram Reel, same with YouTube Shorts because they all have slightly different formats. So TikTok and Instagram could actually be one and the same. YouTube Short cannot, however, because they have a very specific format of what is actually capable for you to be able to post. So today we'll just work on the YouTube one, the rest all follow the same suit. So it's the same actions applied. So we're gonna head back into here. We're going to connect, create a record, Airtable base, file name is going to be equal to the file name. And then the video ID is going to be the file ID from step six. We are going to hit OK. We're going to save it and we are going to run it once. So if we drop in that video once again, we'll let it upload. It's finished uploading. We're going to run it once. And now we come here. We can see that it has successfully output. And now we see our file name. We got the video ID and the folder ID. So obviously, name these something that you're actually going to know what they are. And now the next step is to add a video type. So we're going to come in here. We're going to add an automation when the record matches, select the content table and the condition is going to be when the video type is YouTube. We are going to run a script and this is the script that we need. So I'll let params input config, it's going to pass some action. So we're going to add an input variable. We're going to call it record ID. And then that value is going to be equal to the Airtable record ID. We're going to hit finish editing for now. We are done with our Google Drive Airtable setup. So we can just go ahead and hit save. We can turn that on if we want. And we're going to back out of here. We're going to create another scenario. This scenario is going to watch responses. We're going to create a webhook. We're going to call this the content Google Drive content. We're going to save, copy that address to clipboard, head back into the script. And where it says webhook, we're going to replace it with the webhook. And in, in the action, we're going to write YouTube. Come back in here, hit finish editing, back to our integration. We can run this once, save, save anyways, hit OK. We'll run it once. We'll come back into our data, the video type. We're going to select YouTube, head to our automations, choose the record that we just added. And then we are going to test the action, make sure that it works. So you can see that it was a successful. We go back into our Airtable integration. You'll see that now it's past the record ID from this line item. And it's also past the action YouTube. And you'll see why that's important in a second. Right here, we're going to add a filter. We're going to call this YouTube filter. The condition is going to be the action is equal to YouTube. So now, eventually, we'll set up TikTok. We'll set up Instagram Reels. We'll set up, you know, all of these different platforms and then based on the action that's received it's going to trigger a different set of outputs I'm going to add chat gpt get a completion use 40 Let's set this to user max tokens equal to zero so i went ahead added in a couple more steps just to test things out essentially what we want to do is add the Airtable get a record after that YouTube. So I'm going to come in here. You're going to choose the record ID from step one. So now we'll be able to pull that record, get that result, right? You can see here it successfully pulled the, the file name, the folder ID and the video ID. Next thing we want to do is download that file because we want to create the transcription of our YouTube video. And the issue is, is that if you do long form YouTube videos like I do, oftentimes the file size is too large for Whisper, which is ChatGPT's transcription service. So we are going to want to convert it into an MP3 format so that it's much more condensed and I've had no issues doing this. So going to download a file connected to Google Drive. We are going to want to grab the video ID from step number four, right? So we're going to connect that to the video ID, which is the file ID. We're going to hit OK. Next thing you want to do is add a cloud convert. So if you don't know what cloud convert is, it essentially just allows you to choose any file and convert it from one file to the other. So you're going to go into API, follow the quick start guide, right? You can just log in or sign up. 
I went ahead, I, I signed it. I think you get 25 credits per day and one of these conversions counts as one credit. So unless you're doing more than 25 videos a day, it's free. And then with an API, you can just go API keys, generate your API keys, and then you'll have it. And the connection takes place the exact same way like you would with anything else, right? So you just add in your API keys here, you'll create your connection. And then these are the settings that you want to have on this. So you're going to upload a file, that file is going to be the Google Drive downloaded file. And then you in terms of the format, you want to select the input format being MP4, because that's the video file format that we have and that is usually exported. And then the output format is going to be MP3, with the file name equal to the name of the file in step number five, we want to select yes, as the download file, we're going to hit okay. Now, next thing we want to do is transcription. So we're going to get that newly converted file and make sure that you choose whisper, we come in here, create a transcription whisper. That's the one we want you can leave the prompt blank, leave the response format in JSON. And then in OpenAI, we're going to create a completion, the model is going to be GPT-4. And the message is going to be user. So I wrote I want to generate a viral title for my YouTube video that will make people want to click it a description of what is covered in the video, and hyper specific tags that people will search to find this video 500 characters total, because that's the limit. Finally, I want to prompt that I can feed my AI to my AI thumbnail generator that will make people want to click on it. Here is the script. And then the text is going to be the transcription text from that video. And it's going to say, please provide the output in the following format, JSON format with title, description, tags, and thumbnail prompt. Ensure that the title is attention grabbing and click where the, the description accurately summarizes the video content in an engaging way. The tags are hyper specific and relevant to potential searches with a maximum of 500 characters and the thumbnail prompt will generate an image that entices viewers to click on the video. We set the max tokens to zero, that'll generate the output. And you can see that I did test it before just to make sure that the JSON parsing was working. So you can see it split all of it into nice little categories. So title, description, tags, thumbnail, then we are going to want to add a parse JSON module that's going to be the result so that it can parse it for us. And now you can see that it actually takes that input and splits it into a bundle where title description tags and thumbnail prompts all become variables. And then lastly, we push it back to Airtable with the title description tag and thumbnail prompt, and it'll update the record, right? So we're updating the record. And so now if we try this again, right, we're going to run it once and head back into our Airtable scenario. Make sure you also add the thumbnail prompt column, which we didn't have before head into automations, we're going to test the action, you can see it's found the file, it's grabbed the record info, it's successfully downloaded it. Now it's going ahead, it's converting that file file has been converted successfully, you can see I'm using just a short in this one. So this is the text that was output, you can see that's what I was worried about. So we just need to make sure that the result doesn't include any JSON or delimiters. Okay, so we're going to head back into our prompt. I got this new prompt I just created. So it's literally exactly the same. The only thing I added at the end was the output should be a valid JSON object without any additional formatting comments or code block delimiters. We're going to run it again and test the action. So we'll let that run. In the meantime, while that's running, I would really appreciate if you guys dropped a like and subscribe if you've stayed this long into the video, it really helps my channel grow and allows me to continue creating these videos for you. It's free, it costs nothing. And it literally takes a second of your time. I really appreciate it. Now you can see it actually was successful, right? The result was proper, the JSON was parsed properly. And lastly, you can see all of these were updated. So if we go back into our Airtable, you can see we got the title Nvidia to outshine Apple and Amazon, the shocking truth revealed, we got a YouTube description, we have hyper specific YouTube tags. And we also got our thumbnail prompt, an illustration of a surprise investor holding Nvidia chips with the stock price skyrocketing in the background featuring logos of Apple, Amazon, Google and Microsoft in a fading style. So pretty damn powerful. The next thing we could add is, you know, another step that would create the thumbnail for us. I've actually already covered a video on how you can do this on my page. Now it's just about linking it all together. 
as I work towards building a super system for managing content, specifically for content creators, directly within Airtable. So that, you know, it's really just about you uploading videos into your inbox. And once they are uploaded into your inbox, it populates into Airtable. And it's just about putting on specific tags and those tags will have these different transformations that are applied to it based on the video type that it is. So it can save you a ton of time from having to come up and think of YouTube titles, YouTube descriptions, YouTube tags. Obviously you can change them to however you like now, right? But it gives you a base and a starting point. And that's pretty much it for what I wanted to cover today. I hope you got immense value out of this. And if you did, stay tuned because I have a lot more coming and it is going to be incredible. So with that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.